And my father uh, actually gave me, uh, I think, the one and only inspirational speech he's ever given me in, in my life. Because I already told you about my father. He's more the, the cheat on the taxes kind of father than the <laughs> inspirational speech kind of father. Okay? And here's what he told me. And i got to give you a little bit of background so you can understand the story. So he's a medical researcher. And if you're a medical researcher, you go to med school, you do an internship, you do residency, and then you've got to go get a research fellowship. And that's a critical moment in your career is finding a mentor who can really, really build you into something special. And so my father, somehow back in the early 1960s, had managed to land a research fellowship at one of the most famous big Boston research hospitals. He was really uh, at the epicenter of research. His mentor was the editor of the New England Journal of Medicine. So he really was like in a super special spot. Okay? And everything was going great. His career couldn't have been going better when my father now tells me the story, he swears it's true, that about two months into his research fellowship, his mentor pulls my father into the office, sits him down, and he says, Levitt, I'm sorry to say, but you have no talent for medical research. Okay, you can imagine my dad's horror when he realizes that his mentor thinks he's terrible at research. But the guy goes on. He says, there is, however, one area of science which is so devoid of knowledge that even someone with your severe limitations might be able to make a contribution. Okay? And my dad says, well, well what area is that? Okay, and I kid you not, the guy says to him, intestinal gas. Okay? Now, others might have reacted differently, but my dad took those words to heart, and he devoted his entire professional career to researching intestinal gas. Okay? He became the world's foremost medical expert on the topic. And okay, not only did, did he get all sorts of awards and accolades within his profession, he actually got to be a little bit of a, of a, of a, a kind of B-list celebrity. So, for instance, when I was in high school, much to my amazement, GQ, you know, the men's magazine, did a two-page pictorial spread on my dad. And the headline read, The King of Farts, they call my dad. Okay? So you got to remember, this is my dad's inspirational speech as he's, he's describing his career. So he says, look, I had no talent, you have no talent. Okay? If you want to succeed in a profession for which you have no talent, the only hope you have is to take on a set of topics that are so embarrassing and degrading that nobody with any self-respect would go near those topics. And uh, I thought about it, and I said, well, it worked for you, Dad, and I don't have a lot of other options, so maybe I'll give that a shot. And so I went back to MIT, and instead of trying to study the money supply and interest rates and the things that are important to economics, I started trying to, you know, uh, catch sumo wrestlers cheating by um, throwing matches and, and cheating school teachers and, and figuring out what, whether the name you give your kids matters for life outcomes. And uh, it's really, really amazing that uh, my dad's advice turned out to be the best advice I ever got, which is that if you have no talent, you've got to be different. Uh, and I think, you know, the, the extension of that is even if you have talent, there's nothing like being different. I mean, you're in a very competitive business, right? You compete tooth and nail. Uh, thinking differently, one good idea, like one John Szilagyi like idea, can change the path of a firm, uh, you know, of, of a life, of a career. And, uh, and I think none of us really actually uh, have the luxury of spending time trying to think and, and really go after.